Hello Anatomy students! This is a weekly checklist presentation. I may have dropped a few hints to you throughout the week, but I've decided to change the format uh, of how we run class. Um, in the, uh, what we've been doing all year is kind of a quasi-flipped uh, classroom where I've had you read and then you come to class and then you apply what you've read by using your notes to answer questions. And then I go over them with you. The problem with this is that it's a very teacher-centered approach, and I would like to change that so that you are doing more to acquire your learning. And I'm losing my light. <laughs> Sorry, there we go. We'll see if it stays, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, um, here's the organization of our class. Uh, first of all, each unit will consist of modules. Uh, for instance, our first unit that we're going to try this with is the central nervous system unit, and I've divided it up into two modules. Module one is going to cover only objective 711, and you're probably like, well, why is it only one? But if we read through it here, it says, identify on a modeler diagram and indicate the functions of the major regions of the cerebral hemispheres, the diencephalon, the brainstem, and the cerebellum. That is a huge learning objective. So we're going to dedicate a full week from uh, tomorrow, Friday the 8th, to Thursday uh, the 14th, um, completely learning uh, the brain. Module 2 for Unit 5, the central nervous system, is going to cover the rest or the, the other four objectives um, about the meningeal layers, uh, cerebral spinal fluid, functions of the spinal cord, and the structure of the spinal cord as well. Now, my plan is to have modules run from Friday to Thursday. Um, I just feel like if the weekend is in the middle of the module or if it's at the end, uh, that you're going to save everything for the very last minute. So by placing the weekend towards the beginning of the module, I'm hoping to manipulate you a little bit so that you are doing these things, uh, the activities, um, chunk by chunk, bit by bit throughout the week. So we will plan to have our assessments on Thursday. So in fact, the first quiz that counts will be on Thursday, November 14th. So what are you supposed to do? Well, number one, read the checklist. And I'll show you where that is in a moment, but you'll see that all of the learning activities and all of the due dates are posted. You're going to come to class and you're going to do the activities. Um, if you're if needed or if you are interested, feel free to do activities at home. Everything is accessible to you through your Chromebook. So what this does is it establishes an environment for what's called asynchronous learning. In the classroom over the last couple of months, I've kept all of you pretty much on the same page. Sometimes I might split the class. Um, but then we all come back together at the end of class. And uh, that's great, except that I know that some of you need to maybe work a little bit more slowly, and some of you may want to speed it up a little bit. And so this is going to give you the opportunity to do that. Uh, you also have some choice. I am suggesting an order in which you should do the activities, but if that doesn't seem to work for you, or if you want to change it up, by all means, go ahead. Just recognize that there are some due dates that need to be observed. Uh, as I mentioned, you're able to work with your own pace, and I'm sure you're wondering, well, what are you going to do during class then if everything is on the computer? Well, this is going to allow me to pull various groups of students, um, and I can create um, specialized or, you know, very tailored activities that are geared toward what you need help with the most. So um, my the plan, the design, is to really give you a learning experience that, um, A, is, is enjoyable and memorable for you, 
but B, that's going to help you to build some of these skills that you're going to need when you leave Hinsdale South and you go on to your post-secondary education. Um, you're going to have to plan how you study. This is going to help you do that. But I'm still here to um, kind of guide you in the right direction should you need it. I'm sure that many of you are wondering, well, can I work with my friend? And at first, sure, um, you can definitely work together, but there might come a time or you know, a point in time when you pull ahead or when I have you guys take a practice quiz and you know, maybe one of you did you know, way better than the other, you know, I might put you into groups based upon where you are on the module checklist and also based upon your level of understanding. So, um, you know, again, just because it's, I'm blending the learning activities with, you know, some traditional activities and some uh, computer technology-based activities, you know, that doesn't mean that, you know, I, I, we're not going to do some social uh, learning activities as well. I, I haven't lost track of that fact that learning really is a social activity. So. So what if you have a question? Well, if you're working at home and you have a question about something, I urge you to send me a message in Canvas or send me an email or write it down. And I can certainly address that during class. You know, if I need to, maybe I'll have a, a box or something where you could write down your question, throw it in there, and um, I'll save time at the end where I can go through all of those questions. Um, I think I talked about this, the second bullet, just that I, I know learning is a social activity. I'm not trying to erase that part of learning. And there are many activities that we are still going to do together, like taking tests. I don't want to get rid of partner tests. I think that that's a great experience for you. Um, dissecting and, and other learning activities like puzzles and whiteboarding, all of that is still going to stay. Um, we're just adding a new facet to the learning experience. So just remember that this is called blended learning and I'm just adding in a little bit more new to the old teaching and learning process. But this is what I need to impress upon you. I know this all sounds really exciting, like, oh, I don't have to do things until I really want to. I can save it all to the last minute. I urge you not to do that. This is really going to test your diligence, your focus, and your self-control. I mean, every day in class, I see this all the time. The minute that there's a moment of downtime, students are taking out their cell phones and watching a video or texting a friend. I cannot impress this upon you enough. You really don't have time to do that. When I show you the checklist for this module, I think that you'll agree. That doesn't mean that you should not take breaks. You should take brain breaks, no pun intended, but uh, you know, work for 20 or 25 minutes, break for five, and then jump right back in. If you take your break for too long and you hop on your phone and then you get distracted, all of a sudden that bell is going to ring and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I just wasted the whole class period. So, um, you know, make sure that you really are monitoring yourself. I'm not saying you can't jump on your phone for a minute to take a break. You can, but you've got to, um, you've got to come back. And, and I'll urge you to do that. If I see you taking out your phone and you're like, I'm taking a break, great, five minutes, and then get back to work. Um, I know that a lot of you think that you'll do it on the weekend, but remember, life happens. And you get that ticket to the football game that you weren't expecting, or a friend drops by, or maybe needs your advice and you have to spend time with them. I understand all of those things. Um, but the, the due dates are going to stick. So um, you, you, you've got to do what you can in class. If I see that you're working really hard in class and something happens on a weekend and you can't meet a due date, of course let me know. I think that I have shown you that I am flexible. Um, but with um, a course uh, design like this, um, where you have so much flexibility built in already, um, you know, I may not be ready to say, you know, oh yeah, just, you know, wait a couple more weeks to turn that in because again, the whole point here is to support your learning. So 
So here's what you need to bring to class every day. Chromebook, stylus, power cord, and probably a notebook because I know that some of you like to write pencil and paper. Oh, and I also wanted to mention this, that um, all of the documents, like all of the activities, it's not all on Kami. There are some, I, I know this, that are um, more useful in paper form. And so I, I will have some paper documents um, for you as well. So I don't want you to think that, oh my gosh, the paper's going away. It's, it's not. I, I understand that sometimes things are better to write on. Okay, so I'm going to um, pause this. Oops. Uh, I want to pause this here and I want to take you over to, this is the Canvas module and this is mine. Yours is going to look a little bit different than mine. Um, I'm going to leave the module checklist at the very top of the list. So I want to go click on this and go here first. And um, this is the Unit 5 Module 1 checklist and it just kind of tells you, you know, a lot of things that are going on. So definitely read this. I'm not going to read it out loud to you. Um, all assignments are due on Wednesday, November 13th at 1159 and prepare for a quiz that counts on Thursday, November 14th. Now, when we look at the assignments, the ones that are highlighted in this green color, I would like you to submit to me through Cami um, for evaluation and feedback. And I, I think that there's only two. Um, but then we also have um, some formative assessments. Formative assessments don't count for points. It's, it's just practice and it's just to give you information and me on where you are at in the learning process. Here it tells you what you need to bring, uh, how you need to start class every day in purple. You're going to complete something called the daily reflection log. And that daily reflection log is back here in the module. And I'm asking you to click on that. This is going to open in Kami. And you need to fill this out for each day. And I'll create a new one for each um, for each uh, unit and each module. And so for instance, on Friday, when we actually start this, I need to know what's your goal for the day? Like, what do you want to complete? Did you take a break? I'm just asking you to kind of track your activity. And so take a couple minutes at the start of class um, to uh, fill this out for Friday. And then on Saturday and Sunday, if you're gonna do any work, make sure that you fill it out there as well. Uh, the other part that um, I want you guys to do at the end of class each day is the assignment reflection log. And this also is a part uh, of the module. And you just need to reflect on what you did during class and uh, write it down or type it out. And you're just going to keep a running total of everything. And so, you know, the first assignment, read and take notes in the textbook. Check it off when you're done. What were your thoughts about the assignment? Do you think it's going to be useful or not? And then after you take the quiz on the 14th, did this assignment support your learning? So um, there's a lot of things here that you can look at. But yes, I would like this to be filled out again by the due date, which is on the uh, 13th of November. So uh, coming back then to our checklist. Okay, so uh, anyway, the two logs are, are listed here. In pink, I have our learning objective. And one thing that you'll notice is that I'm not asking you to turn in um, answers to these objectives. We're going to try it. We'll see how you guys do not doing it. If it seems to me like you need them, then, um, uh, then I'll assign it. But this again, this is a great way to study. So um, you know you can always do that on your own. And then we have different parts. So we have part one, the cerebrum, and it tells you everything that you need to do. Oh, look, here's something that's highlighted in green. Um, you'll need to turn that in and submit that for evaluation. Part two is about the diencephalon and the limbic system. There's an actively learned video. There's a, um, a notes organizer. And it looks like down here that I am probably going to run out of time very soon. So I'm going to stop 